So let's talk about the Toyota Prius Prime 2021, although I imagine it's very similar for the 2022 or the 2023 or even uh, prior models. Um, but I only own the 2021 LE, by the way. This is the LE, so it's got the seven inch display. I'm not gonna talk about the 11 inch display because uh, other than just to say that the air conditioning controls, from what I understand, are on the display, whereas in the LE, they're actually a, a whole different uh, control panel uh, on the in the center of the dash, okay, which I like a lot better, actually, and uh, we'll get into that. So uh, what were, the, the reason this video is being made was I came into a problem where I was trying to use the remote air conditioning, and... Uh, it, if I was just going to make the video, you just press and hold the third button on the key, which this is the key right here. Hopefully I'm going to get it upright. All right. And, uh, and that cuts the air conditioning on. And, uh, and then you can leave the car. I, well, it's a little bit more to it than that. <laughs> and then if I got into that, I had to get into everything else. So let's just talk about the key for two seconds. All right. First thing is, is that to save the battery on the key, because uh, i got to bait you to the end of the video about why just holding the AC button is not all you need to know about using the remote air conditioning. There's a lot more to it than that. But anyway, the, to, to save the battery on the key, you press and hold the lock button and press down the, the, the unlock button. And you see, hopefully you might have seen that red light flash. It'll flash four times. And what that does is it cuts the key off. So if you actually walk up to the driver's side door and you try to open it, uh, the key won't work no more. And what that's telling you is the key is it's a little, probably a little switch in here or transistor which cuts the key off and that'll save the battery when, when the key is not in use. I, I cut it off. The one thing I don't like is when you press down that, that uh, lock key, well, obviously the lock key locks the car. <laughs> when I've got my car in the garage, I don't want to lock the damn car. Uh, so to cut the key off, you know, what I do is, is okay, I open the door, you can press down the lock key, press down the unlock key twice. Of course, now the car's locked. If you shut the door without manually unlocking the car, it's going to lock the car. So what I, with the door open, I can unlock the car and then shut the door. So now I got the key cut off and the car unlocked. It, it's a pain in the butt, but that's my workaround for... The, I understand they, they figure if you're cutting the key off, the car should be, you know, that they always default to the doors lock automatically. You know, the windows are up on, I mean, you know, everything's, you know, they're, they're trying to say that, you know, obviously the uh, car owner's too stupid to know what they want, basically. And, uh, and that's true of everything. The other thing about the key is you've got the uh, manual key, which uh, there's just a little lever on the back right here. I'm just going to show that to you. Okay, and you just press that up, and then the key pops out. The reason I had it out <laughs> to begin with is because after breaking my neck, my hands don't work too well. I have no feeling in uh, some of the fingers. So I wanted to not fiddle with the key trying to pull the manual key out. The, uh, the last thing you need to know is, of course, you got the emergency button, the red button at the bottom. I think everybody knows what that is. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's get into the air conditioning just a little bit before we talk about uh, using the remote uh, AC button. Uh, by the way, it should be remote heat slash AC, which is something that I don't think that Toyota... Toyota has... They're terrible about uh, promoting the features on their cars. I mean, I didn't even not even know that you could use this button to heat the car. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was... I don't know why, I just thought it was for air... Because I live in Florida, I thought it was just for air conditioning only. And uh, then this winter, I was like, I wonder if it'll heat the car too, you know? Because basically, you cut the AC button off, that defaults the car into heating mode, and then set the temperature on whatever temperature you want. And you can use the same button to heat the car. I, Toyota, man, <laughs> you need to advertise these things. I, I, you know, I've, I've owned the car for, I had owned the car for about a year and a half before I even knew that I could heat the car with the same feature. So it's, a, it, it, in Michigan, in Michigan, for example, that would be a huge uh, promotion because we used to put those remote uh, starters on the cars so that you could start those gasoline engines and then heat the car up before it, because I didn't have a garage. Even if you have a garage in Michigan, sometimes you want to heat the car up before you get into it. Uh, so this is a great feature that you could sit there and heat the car up 
uh, you know, while you're um, that way. Now, I don't know in extremely cold temperatures how that battery is going to do heating up the car, but uh, that's somebody that lives in a cold climate, I guess. They can answer that question. Uh, the first button on the air conditioning is going to talk about is the auto button. That's the upper left, uh, you know, in the, from the center, upper left. Now, the auto button is pretty cool because uh, what that'll do is uh, it'll detect whether uh, somebody's in the passenger seat. And if they're not, it'll put all that air onto the driver, which is great. It also detects if people are in the back seat, uh, depending on how, there's another button you can use to just say front seat only, uh, which I I'm, I use because uh, it's just me and I rarely have passengers. Uh, but you don't have to have that. It'll just detect whether somebody's in the back. But a lot of times I put you know, a bag of dirt in the back seat. <laughs> if I think there's a, there, it's going to cool my bag of dirt in the back of the car. No, no, I want to be able to override that. So I do override it. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it'll detect if there's people in the back seat and automatically, and that's what the auto button's all about. So you might want to just leave it on auto if you just leave your back seat empty. Um, of course, the off button is off. Uh, you got the three control buttons. Let's get the manual up to the camera. I'm going to hold it there for just a minute and you can pause, but you'll see the three buttons in the middle, but this is what it looks like. Okay, hopefully we got that on the video. And, uh, you know, the left button controls the temperature up, takes the temperature up, down, takes the temperature down. Uh, the middle button's for the fan, up, takes fan, you know, fan speed up, fan speed down, and then, of course, the, uh, the, the middle button controls the airflow and there's four different airflows that you can do it's pretty standard on all cars you can uh, airflow to the upper body airflows to the upper body and feet airflows to the feet and airflows to the feet and the windshield defogger uh, operates so those are the four modes for the um, for that so that pretty much covers that portion of the air conditioning the uh, the auto mode like I said is uh, is, is kind of weird uh, I, there's another button Okay, it's it's right here on the on the left lower side, just below the auto button. There's the front button, and when you press it, it'll illuminate. And uh, I'll just read to you the front front seat concentrated airflow mode. This function automatically controls the air air conditioning airflow so that priority is given to the front seats. Now that's an auto mode, but I'm pretty sure if it's not an auto mode and you just press front seat, it'll just go to the front seat. Um, the front seat concentrated airflow mode operates in the following situations. No passengers are detected in the rear seats. That's what I was saying. That's an auto mode. Uh, the windshield defogger is not operating. While operating the, uh, the mode, it illuminates. So that'll tell you, you know, whether, whether it's... And then, of course, manually tuning the front seat concentrated airflow. If the front seat concentrated airflow mode directing airflow to the front seats only and to all seats can be switched via the switch operation and that's what I was talking about so you can just press the button and have it on all the time indicator illuminated airflow to the front seats only just so just look for it being illuminated um, and then of course like I said uh, well eco mode you do need to understand that just a little bit I just leave it in eco mode all the time all that eco mode does is it uh, adjusts the air conditioning to give you the maximum fuel efficiency I don't notice any difference I stay nice and cool in eco mode it'll take the fan speed down uh, a bit um, if, if it needs it to to uh, to give you better fuel efficiency but I uh, I'm telling you I operate in eco mode here in Florida all the time and it keeps the car adequately cool for me up to you so now let's get into the purpose of the video <laughs> a long time getting here huh? oh my god is the remote AC uh, slash heat button on, and what that means and, and, and the things that you need to know about it. Um, so to activate, obviously, I said you just press and hold the button on, on the key. That's about it. So there you go. You know everything you need to know. Now, this these is funny because I, 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 sometimes you got to make fun of the manual. <laughs> I just love this shit. Okay, so operating conditions will only operate if all these conditions are met. Number one, the shift position is in park. <laughs> How are you going to remotely operate the air conditioning? I mean, I guess you could put it... I mean, can you leave the car and drive? And I guess you could and try to get out. I don't think so. I think once you open the door, it automatically puts it in park. 
But yeah, if it's in drive, it might go through right through your garage door and your remote AC is not going to work. Uh, now, I guess you might be able to leave it in neutral, although I can't imagine why you would ever do that. Once again, I think once you open the door, it automatically... Uh, now, this is, this is true. You do need to know about this. All doors have to be closed and uh, the hood is closed. So if you're pressing the button, the air conditioning is not cutting on, you know, that might be a reason. Make sure that all the doors are closed and the hood's closed. Now, here's the one. This is, <laughs> you've waited all this time for this one little tidbit of uh, information. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe this. The remote air conditioning system cannot be used for approximately three and a half minutes after the power switch is turned off. What the hell, Toyota? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Oh, my God. And so why this happened? How this happened? Why this video came about? I took the dog to Walmart. I'm sitting in the parking lot and I got out the car, shut all the doors. You know, I locked it. By the way, the car automatically locks when you press down and hold the AC button, which is a nice feature, you know, because if you're remote operating the air conditioner remotely, it's okay if it automatically locks the doors, whatever. I can't imagine why, you know, you wouldn't want that, but you know, it, it, you never know. I mean, like my condition, you know, I got the car in the garage. Do I want the doors locked? No, no, I don't. All right, so um, I, 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 it wouldn't work. I kept pushing on the button, pressing on the button. I was like, what the hell? So what I finally had to do is I drove to a remote place in the parking lot, and I put the keys in the car, and I cut the car on, and I just left the car running uh, on the battery for the dog. Now, here's something else that I'm glad you waited for the last part of the video is, okay, if the battery is too low, the remote air conditioning will not work. Okay, so if you're going to be driving somewhere with the dog and you want to be able to use that air conditioning for, you know, remotely, now you're going to have to wait. You have to stand out in the hot Florida sun for three and a half minutes looking at the dog through the window going, I'm sorry, puppy. I'm going to get the air conditioning on here soon, baby. Hold on, hold on. It's only been two minutes, two and a half minutes. It's getting to three, three minutes. Anyway, so now, you know, I'm sorry, I just, it, it's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. But if you drove there in EV mode, or eco mode, I guess, I'm sorry, eco, eco mode, then you, you might have drained that battery down too low. So be sure and operate it in HV mode. And you, if you know your Prius Prime, that's the middle button uh, on the, just to the right of the air conditioning. And hit, and hit it, and you'll see the, the light on the dash. It'll tell you you got power mode, you got eco mode, and then you've got um, uh, normal. Okay, those are the three modes. And I did a video on those. You can watch that video sometime. So that's uh, that's the other reason. Uh, so be sure and drive it in HV mode whenever you're going to want to uh, use the remote air conditioning. If you if you're not home now, here's the the other thing that I'm I'm curious about is that if you are parked in the garage and the car is charging up, and I'll read to you, uh, I want to read to you what it says. Oh, here we go. Ah, so here's what it says. And so it says, if the remote air conditioning is used while the charging cable is connected to the vehicle, the reduction of charge in the hybrid battery, traction, they call it the traction battery, will be suppressed. Okay, in other words, your car is not going to be charging up while the uh, uh, the air conditioning is operating from you know, with the remote uh, AC will be suppressed to allow you to use electricity from an external power source. Okay, so it's what that's saying is it's using the household electricity. Well, my question is, once the car is charged up, system is used while the oh, okay, no, this answers the question. I'm sorry. If is used while the charge, if the remote is used, the reduction of charge, well, it just says if it's charging, it will, it will cut off. If it's not charging, then it's going to use your household electricity. It sounds to me, now, the, like I said, these directions, you, you tell me how you interpret it. The reduction of charge in the hybrid battery will be suppressed to allow you to use electricity from an external power source. Charging will be conducted automatically after the remote air conditioning system is stopped. Okay, so that just means it's going to start charging the vehicle again. But if you read the first sentence, if the remote air conditioning system is used while the charging cable is connected to the vehicle, well, I don't know. So my question is, if the car is fully charged, will it use the household electricity? I have no answer to that question, but I would imagine that it would. 
So why not? I mean, it takes five and a half hours to charge the car in the morning. I just uh, leave it plugged in, charge it up. You know, you all got to be sure to unplug it, but you got the safety feature because Toyota will tell you if the charging port is open because I've done that many times. <laughs> I get in the car, got my coffee, man. It's time to take off. Oh, thank God, man. I, I would have drove off with the cable connected to the side of the car. Yes, it does happen. So um, that's about it. So, um, you know, the 10 minute. Oh, yeah. And this is another terrible thing about the remote air conditioning. It only about 10 minutes. So it cuts off after 10 minutes. The system will automatically shut off. Why 10 minutes? Why, why not just leave it on until... Well, I, I understand you got to set the limit somewhere. I mean, it'd be nice if it was adjustable, you know, within the, but that's another computer, you know, feature that you would have to add in. Uh, you know, I would make it maybe uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I don't know, because, you know, when you go grocery shopping, you sometimes in there about 30 minutes. I mean, 10 minutes is not going to keep the car cool. Uh, of course, you know, in theory, you could run out to the parking lot, <laughs> cut the air conditioning on, run back in the store and sit in there for 10 minutes and then come out to a nice cool car. I, I To me, you know, I, it, I, I'll just sit in the hot car. All right. Uh, of course, if the temperature outside, if the ambient temperature outside is below uh, the, the temperature set in the car, the, uh, the remote air conditioning is not going to work or, and the heater is not going to work. If the temperature outside is above where you, you in the, and the air conditioning is off, it's not going to obviously heat the car up any hotter than it is outside. So, of course, you know, I, that seems like common sense, but at the same time, you know, you might, uh, let's say it was, you got home, it was a, a really, uh, here in Florida, for example, man, it was, it was, you had the heater going. And uh, you forgot to put the AC on, and then you come and you press the AC button. Well, nothing's going to happen because <laughs> number one, you don't have the AC on, and number two, you didn't adjust the temperature down wise. So you know, there, there, that is that is something that you need to know. All right. Uh, well, and of course, if the the battery in the key <laughs> is dead, now that that's that'd be a whole different video. All right. Peace out. Stay free. Uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Edumacation on the Toyota Prius Prime.